All right, I'm talking to you, journalists, politicians, educators, entertainers, athletes. Since you're all constantly lecturing the rest of us on what we should think and how we should behave, I have a simple question for you. In this cup is a piece of paper on which I have written the name of a person or a company or a book or a religion that has been accused of sexualizing children. I'm not going to tell you the name in the cup yet. I'm just going to ask you, before I tell you the name, do you condemn this person or company or book or religion for sexualizing children? What's that? You can't answer until I tell you the name? Why is that? Oh, it's because depending on what the name is, your moral standards will suddenly change. So, if I tell you that the name in the cup is Netflix, and that Netflix has sexualized children in the film Cuties, you'll condemn Netflix and call for a boycott. But if I tell you that the name in the cup is Muhammad, or the Quran, or Islam, and that Muhammad and the Quran and Islam have sexualized children, you won't condemn them. Instead, you'll condemn anyone who so much as questions Muhammad and the Quran and Islam for sexualizing children. Oh, you don't think that Islam sexualizes children? Let's read Sahih al-Bukhari, 5133. There are way, way more passages than this, but let's keep it simple this time. Notice the chapter heading. Giving one's young children, not adults, giving one's young children in marriage is permissible. Why? By virtue of the statement of Allah, and for those who have no monthly courses, no monthly period, i.e. they are still immature, that's Surah 65, verse 4 of the Quran. So, why is it okay to let someone marry your young daughter? Because the Quran talks about marrying girls who are too young to have a monthly period. And the idda, the idda is the waiting period to divorce your wife if you've already had sex with her, and the idda for the girl before puberty, before puberty, before puberty, is three months in the above verse. So the Quran is laying down guidelines for divorcing prepubescent girls. And now, to illustrate the Quran's claim that marrying and having sex with a prepubescent girl is perfectly acceptable, Bukhari presents this hadith. Narrated Aisha that the Prophet wrote the marriage contract with her when she was six years old, and he consummated his marriage when she was nine years old, and then she remained with him for nine years, i.e. till his death. According to Surah 33, verse 21 of the Quran, Muhammad is an excellent pattern of conduct for men. But Muhammad had sex with a prepubescent nine-year-old girl. So, did Muhammad sexualize young girls? Absolutely. Does the Quran sexualize young girls? Absolutely. Does Islam sexualize young girls? Absolutely. Is it wrong to sexualize little girls? Let me guess, you still can't answer, right journalists? Right politicians? Right educators? Right entertainers? Right athletes? You can't say it's wrong because that would be Islamophobic. You can't say it's right because you'd be promoting pedophilia. So, you stay quiet. No, actually you don't. You condemn the people who condemn the ideology that sexualizes children. But when Netflix sexualizes 11-year-old girls who, let's face it, by Islamic standards, are practically senior citizens, suddenly your moral compasses start working again. Why does anyone ever bother to listen to you, you giant steaming pile of hypocrites and cowards? You want to know who's responsible for sexualizing children? It's the journalists and the politicians, and the educators, and the entertainers, and the athletes who protect ideologies that sexualize children. That's right. It's you.